shared a few details a week ago uh, of this prototype uh, barcode scanner project, um, and I got a lot of questions and comments on it. So I thought I'd share a quick demo so you can see it working and fill you in on the progress so far. The goal for this project was uh, to have a device mounted in the kitchen, which when a product is running low or is used up whilst we're cooking, we can simply scan the barcode on it and the product will be added to the supermarket shopping list. Um, sounds quite simple, but there are quite a few steps involved in that. Um, we need a piece of hardware to scan the barcode on. Um, it needs to be able to then take that barcode, which is just a, a number, and turn that into the name of a product by looking it up somehow. Um, and then if the product is found, we need to add it to a shopping list. Uh, and if it's not found, it needs to be able to prompt us somehow to give a name for that product so that it can be added uh, and hopefully saved so that next time we scan it, it knows what it is. We're big users of Home Assistant and Mealy. Um, if you don't know what they are, I suggest you uh, Google them uh, and you can thank me later. We use Mealy shopping list for our shared weekly supermarket shopping list and I have it integrated into Home Assistant using the... Uh, Mealy integration, which uh, Home Assistant's Mealy integration is really good. Um, it syncs as part of uh, the integration the shopping lists from Mealy into Home Assistant to do lists. Um, and if you add a product uh, in Home Assistant to the to do list, then it's synced across into the Mealy list and vice versa. Um, we can then open the shopping list in Home Assistant app on our mobile phones when we're in the supermarket uh, and see what we need. Uh, and it works really well for us. And I don't want to change that. So this product needs to um, fit in with that uh, as well as possible uh, and make us uh, quicker and if more efficient to add products to that shopping list. I don't really want to change what we do. We're used to it and it works for us. So let's first take a look at the hardware. As you can see, uh, we just have a ESP32 dev board. Uh, I think this is the ESP32 dev kit one. Um, and we also have this GM67 barcode scanning head. Um, it's capable of outputting barcodes to uh, USB or serial. This is using serial connected to ESP32. As I wanted this to work with uh, Home Assistant, the quickest way to prototype out the software was to use ESP Home. So the ESP32 is running ESP Home, and when it receives a new barcode from the scanner over serial, it sends it uh, and triggers an event on the Home Assistant event bus, passes the barcode as part of that event. It also exposes config entries within the Home Assistant uh, interface which allows me to configure various settings for the scanner such as if the light comes on which scanning mode is used the volume of the beep indicating a successful scan etc um, i've shared all that esp home yaml configuration in the github repository which i'll link in the comments below let's go back to home assistant uh, and take a look at it in action so on the left we've got this serial output coming from the esp32 um, Currently just sort of ticking over a heartbeat, but in a second we'll scan some barcodes and you should see them appear. On the right we've got a shopping list in Mealy um, that is going to um, hopefully have the barcodes appear. So let's take a look. We'll scan a barcode. Uh, here we've just got a chocolate wrapper um, and that is indicated on the left hand side pretty instantly that it's done the lookup. There's a bit of a delay in it appearing on the supermarket shopping list. Uh, I think that's just with Mealy being a little slow. We'll keep scanning a few more, see those products appearing. Um, and it seems to work pretty well. Within a couple of seconds, they are appearing on the shopping list. Um, if I scan the same product twice, one nice feature of Mealy is that it, instead of adding it on two different rows on the shopping list, it actually puts a, uh, the same item on with a with a two in front or three if I scan it three times, etc. So I'll do that again with um, sausage roll packet. Um, try and get it to scan. There we go. And hopefully it will put a two on that line as well. There we go. 
So it works really well. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how that functions and the speed of it so far. Let's take a look at what makes that all work behind the scenes. Um, so the first thing is this is the device, um, the ESP32 running ESP Home um, in Home Assistant. Um, so as I said, you can see that there's lots of configure option uh, that work with the barcode scanner to allow you to turn on and off different features or change settings on the barcode scanner itself. Um, all the details for these and exactly what they do are all in the uh, GitHub repository too. Um, and, and as I continue to develop it, I'll try and keep that up to date. The idea for having these options available from Home Assistant is to do things like, um, if I want to, I can disable them uh, to stop the kids adding random things to uh, the shopping list. Also, um, at night, I can disable it so that the light doesn't come on and you don't get it's shining lights in the in the evening when we don't want to um, be able to add products in the middle of the night. Um, as I said already, the device, when a barcode is scanned, triggers an event on the uh, Home Assistant event bus. Um, it also uh, has an event entity. We don't use this in the later stages, but it's there just for me to be able to see when the barcode was last scanned. Um, I also have it returning what the, the barcode was that it scanned um, as well. Um, when that entity uh, is passed in, the, the event happens in ESP Home, it just has the barcode number. It just has this, this number, and that's no good to us. As I said, we need to be able to turn that into an actual product. Um, so to do that, I have a, a quite lengthy Python script which uh, does a few things and i'll try and explain um, the basics of what it does so when it receives uh, a new barcode it um, first looks up that barcode in a local uh, cache uh, currently it's a csv file uh, i'll probably move that to a database for speed just when we've got lots of products in it um, but at the minute it's very very quick anyway um, barcode passed in is then first looked up in that that cache and if it's not there um, then it goes off to uh, an open foodfacts.org uh, website api um, and tries to look up the um the product there too um if that doesn't work it then tries another website called upcdatabase.org um, and whichever returns an option um it adds the product to the cache if it wasn't already there and then passes the product details the brand the name um, and i think the size of the product back to home assistant this python script needs to be able to do quite a few things and python scripts running natively under home assistant are very locked down and limited in what they can do so i'm actually running this python script under the pi script um, integration uh, it's really powerful it's quite complex and difficult to use if you're not familiar with um with python and the documentation isn't very clear um, but it doesn't matter too much it's pretty easy just to install it and then cut and paste the files in from uh, the github repository into to the right places um, and, and effectively just create this pi scripts folder under your home assistant config um, and hopefully it should work from there. The documentation in the GitHub repository again explains how to, to do that and get that all up and running and, and check it's working. And lastly, to hook all those parts together, we need an automation. So I have um, a, an automation. And this automation, uh, I want a thing I forgot to, to mention is, is it, there are two types of events that it sends. One is when it's fired a uh it's read a proper barcode a numeric barcode and it passes that um the other is that it also supports uh scanning generic qr codes so um, if it reads a qr code and that qr code contains text that has uh the word generic in uppercase uh, colon at the beginning and then any other uh words after that it accepts that as a barcode that i want to add something some generic product so i could have 
a barcode that contains generic colon the word milk and if you scan that qr code it will pass that to home assistant as well and in that instance i don't want to look it up on a third party website instead i just want to take the word milk out of that and, and add it to the shopping list so we offer the option to have sort of default generic barcodes as maybe cards that are for milk or eggs or etc and then you can just scan those and add a generic product to the, the shopping list easily as well um and then this automation essentially depending on which type of event has happened if it's a product barcode then it uh, calls the python script to look that up if the python script successfully reports back then it will add that to the shopping list if it doesn't it sends us uh, a notification um, in the home assistant app on our mobile phones and actually that is uh, prompts us to enter uh, some text in that notification for what the uh, the product is that we just scanned um, and then you can uh, submit that and then that will accept that back in and again it will pass that back to the, the Python script to get it to add it to the cache for next time so the next time we scan that product it knows what it is and it'll add it to the shopping list and if it's a generic barcode then we don't have to do all that we literally just pass it straight into the shopping list it also does allow us to pass that product name that's looked up back to the hardware to the usp home device um currently it doesn't do anything with that but my intention is to add a screen to the the um, hardware so that when you scan the product it will instantly or very quickly come up on that screen what that product is if it's been successful and if it hasn't then uh, it will indicate on the screen that it's not and we know that we need to go and pick our phone up and open the notification tell it what that product is um so yeah it's working great it seems to be quite quick um there's a few things i want to do to continue to improve it uh, both on the software side of things and on uh the hardware side i also want to 3d print uh, a case i haven't yet got around to modeling that yet but i will create a case so that i can fit that in the kitchen and then we'll probably run it for a few months and see how that goes and, and how it works and uh, if it's going to do the job for us <laughs>